as a wing attack got buffed recently, also Pelipper got buffed for the Ultra League. This Pokemon actually gets a pretty decent CP for the Ultra League. You need to have one at level 50 with 100% IV. And here I think it's even best buddied as it reaches 2433. Um, we're going to see actually a very funny team and this is the main reason I really like to showcase this as well. This is a team that I also su suggested to a lot of people for the Great League right now. This is a very common Great League team and now we can take a look on how good this thing is in the old Ultra League because yeah, Pelpa got buffed, so it's viable. Hopefully, we will see. We're going to be able to take a look at the Venusaur as well. Again, one of the better poison types now, as Needle Queen got nerfed. Um, it's basically the best poison type available right now, in my opinion. As they're gonna go down still against the Obstagoon, which actually runs Obstruct, which is funny. Um, I'm going to go for one Night Slash here. Does okay ish damage as you can go for one Weather Ball. This will knock out the opponent. You have two Weather Ball stall again, which is nice. And we see a Deoxys coming in here. Deoxys will have super effective charge moves no matter what. Either Rock Slide or Thunderbolt would knock you out. But you can also try to catch the move, which didn't work out onto your Stunfisk. In comes a uh, what's called a Scrafty here, which is not ideal for you whatsoever. You can get you can go for one Earthquake. This will get the final shield of the opponent, and you might get to the move do you shield this move up you don't shield this move up interesting power punch only this is very good for you because this allows you now to put them into range where i think you can just go for one weather ball and some wing attack damage and you should be fine right weather balls coming through does this knock out the opponent it does not they can still get to move you have to you're going to no shield here it's going to be a power punch, a very risky play, but I think they had to do this play. The opponent tries to farm you down now. Can you go for the hurricane? You can go for the hurricane in time. Is this enough to knock out the opponent? You have one HP, it is enough, and you win with two shields. This was amazing first game already, holy hell. We see the next opponent having the Reggie Steel here in the lead. This is kind of where you want to see the Reggie Steel. They're going to outspeed you for the first move, as you're going to no shield this immediately. Very interesting, like of course, um, it's always going to be a focus blast, it's always going to do a ton of damage, so interesting to no shield this, they're going to shield this as the opponent goes here, as you can get to another move. Um, you always outspeed them the second one, which is cool, but you won't outspeed the next one, I think. But you're going to let this move go through, actually. You're just going to sacrifice your stun fist, and you can go into your Venusaur. And you might even want to just let them throw a move exactly, farm up to 100 energy here, and maybe just farm them even down. Can you farm them down? Nah, no, you cannot, you have to throw here. You're going to not throw here, but you're, they're still going to get to a move, which is kind of unfortunate. But you're just going to keep the energy here alive. You're going to see a Cressalia coming in. You can go ahead and go for two friendly plants if you want to. But you're going to... Yeah, you're actually going to go for two. I guess you're going to be able to go for one more fast move and then swap out and keep... No, you're going to actually just go straight for all the energy onto this Cressalia. And you can go into your Pelipper, which now faces the Trevenant. This will be an actually pretty decent matchup for you, but you still have to be a little bit careful about the um, Cressalia in the back. You're gonna go straight for the Hurricane. Does this hit? It does not, sadly. I actually would have went for the bait as well there. Um, I think it just, like, you're still going to damage with the Weather Ball no matter what, even if you bait is not successful and here you see that you kind of needed it. But actually, wait a minute, you're going to have now a move start already. If the opponent the important most are you going to swap here immediately? Are you going to swap as well? Oh no, I expected them to swap out there, but I think it lagged for you a little bit, so you're not going to be able to win this game. But if you either went straight for Weather Ball or swapped out there, you most likely would have been fine. Very sad there, but still okay. We see a Swamp in the lead. Horrible for you, but Pelipper is coming in here and going to face off against the Reggie Steel. I'm actually curious if you could flip this matchup if you invest two shields here, because you're going to outspeed them so much um, as you're going to. Still, of course, going to get knocked out by one... Oh, you're actually going to the shield here. You're going to get knocked out by one Zap Cannon. But you don't get the debuff, which is amazing for you. You will be able to reach two more fast moves at two more charge moves here. But you will, won't be able to knock, knock them out before they can get to the next move. But you might just want to swap out into your Venus or something here. You're actually going to swap into your Stunfist, catching the Zap Cannon. This is amazing. Very good place here by this player. As we see, um, uh, Hydro can... Oh, actually, no. Actually, already an Earthquake coming through. This allows you to farm them all the way down here. You're actually going to throw a charge move because Earthquake would um, knock you out most likely. And you're going to invest a shield here. You're actually going to let this move go through. Earthquake is not coming through. They're going to go for the bait. This is insanely good for you. As they can only go for another Hydro Can here as well. And now you have a ton of energy. You're going to see a Crystallia coming in which runs Confusion. Which confuses me a little bit. Something that you rarely see. As we see the um, Pelipper coming in. Going for one Weather Ball against the Crystallia. 
You, I think you're in a bad spot though. You're going to shield up this next move, going to be Grass Note. I think you lose this one. But yeah, you have to farm on the Reggie Steel. But you're actually going to go for a charge move here. I don't think there's anything you can do here to win this anymore, but maybe I'm wrong. I hope I'm wrong. Or maybe not. Actually, you have still two moves stored here. Maybe you can go for one more charge move here immediately. They're going to get the move through. Are you, be, are you going to be able to catch the move on your Venusaur? You are able to catch the move on the Venusaur. But can you actually farm them down in time? This is the question here. Can you, you can get to the move in time. That is amazing. <laughs> is he going to be able to win with a 1 HP in a dream again? But Pelipper actually looks pretty decent. Like, I... Not gonna lie, I thought it would be worse than what we see so far. We see a horrible lead for you, and this is not way better either. Um, this is definitely not way better. Interesting enough that you're gonna go into your Venusaur instead of your Pelipper. I would've went to my Pelipper instead. Um, Pelipper is usually the safe stop for this team, so... Interesting play there. Maybe there's a reason for it. If you watch this video, then definitely let me know in the comment section why you go into the Venusaur here, or it's just like random-ish. I don't know. Because I think like Pelipper would have made more sense. It's usually the safe stop for this team. You're going to undercharge so you can get more farm with your Stunfisk. Very nice play there. Maybe they run the Origin Pulse. Not the Origin Pulse. This is the another Kyogre. This is a Giratina. Shadow Force, I mean. But they don't. They run Shadow Sneak, which is definitely the better move. Shadow Force still needs an upgrade, to be fair. Like, it, it's just so bad. You can go for an Earthquake, which allows you to get the shield from the opponent. You can go for another one. Not in time, but I think it's worth shielding here because you can just get either the damage on them or you will be able to get the final shield of the opponent earthquake coming through you're going to get the damage on them and you can swap into your pelipper which gets out the cobalion this is actually an interesting matchup because i think you're going to do a lot of damage here still this is neutral oil and it's going to actually redo a ton of damage against the opponent's cobalion here as we see a stone edge getting shielded which is nice I think you might be able to actually survive on Stone Edge as well, but you can go for two moves, and I think you won't CMP against them, but they're actually going to let the move go through anyway. You just go straight Weather Wall in this case, and you should be fine here. Um, you try to swap, you try to swap, didn't work out, but they're still going to throw against you for whatever reason. I think they, yeah, I think they had to throw anyway. So the Weather Ball coming through here, this will be enough to knock out the opponent, and that's going to be a good game there. Very well played. Next opponent. Pidgeot lead, Tabufini say swap, this looks like a very good RPS match so far. And as I see the bottom thing there coming up, yeah, the opponent decided to forfeit here, they got just completely RPS'd. Which is something that just happens, we see a Dragonite in the lead. This is actually not as good as it was before, because now of course Dragonite has access to the move Superpower. Superpower will be annoying for you here as you're going to try to catch the move, again you're gonna go into your Venusaur as a Seisaur, which I find a little bit weird. But maybe there's a good reason, I don't know, maybe for Reggie Steel. So like if people like if you face the town of Reggie Steel, like here, you have more play with the Venusaur compared to the um Pelipper, might be the case. But interesting one. Like I would have at least always swapped the Pelipper as a swap here, but interesting one that they don't do it. But I don't run this team, so what do I know about the Ultra League? We will be able to go ahead and go into the Stunfisk gear as you can go for an Earthquake. This should knock out the opponent if they let this move go through, but they're going to shield up, of course. You're going to let this move go through as well. That's interesting. It does knock you out. Very nice recognition there because I didn't know that at all. You're going to have to let this move go through because the one Zap Cannon is going to be way more threatening to your Pelipper compared to this move there. But this does not look good whatsoever. The Pelipper goes up against the Reggie Steel again. Can you outspeed them to the next one? I think it doesn't matter because it doesn't KO him yet. I don't think that does KO the opponent. Maybe you still get the shield. That would be ideal. You get the shield, which is very good for you because I definitely don't think this would have knocked them out. Zap Cannon coming through. You don't get the debuff, which is very lucky for you. You're going to try to swap into your Stunfist. Didn't work out but you can still knock out the opponent there with one weather ball as we see the final pokemon being a deoxys and that's going to be a loss as this psycho boost going to knock you out still very well played there good game to the opponent next up polito lead horrible again you're gonna go this time around into the pelipa guess you always swap into the harder answer for whatever reason like usually you swap into the softer answer because the opponent usually um like swaps out there shielding a weather ball wasn't really that nice there yeah like of course the um blizzard is a potential move that the opponent could have and throw but i don't think it would have done that much damage either i don't think it would have knocked you out but uh, dark pulse definitely doesn't knock you out yet and you can go for two more charge moves which would knock out the opponent definitely Weather Ball going to knock them out, and if they want to go back into their Politoed, which they're actually going to do, they're going to go straight for the Weather Ball to knock you out here. 
and we see the Venusaur coming in against the Talonflame. This is going to be a tough one. You have to let this move go through here. It's going to be a flame charge. And the first one going to hurt the least amount of um like yeah, does the least amount of damage. You will be able to go for another rock side, gonna get the opponent's first shield, but like you have to basically get to another move afterwards, which I don't think you're going to be able to get there. No, you're going to get farmed down. And this is going to be a good game. There's nothing that they can do anymore, and they're going to let the move go through as well. Knowing that this game is over, and yeah, one more incinerator was enough to knock you out here. Good game there. Next opponent, we will see the Pidgeot. Pidgeot is very good for you and Cresselia is usually very good. It's sometimes a little bit risky to put in your Cresselia into this matchup because a lot of them actually run the, um, what's called, future side. But the opponent was lucky here, getting the attack drop, which is a 10% chance on your Venusaur, which is really unfortunate for you. But you still should be able to win this matchup, I think. Um, as you can no shield here, I think you're going to outspeed them. Moonblast coming through again, and you can go for fr one more friendly plant, which would knock them out. They might let this go through anyway, exactly. They can go and farm you down with their Pidgeot, but Pidgeot's still going to always get aligned against the Stunfist, so I think you're fine. You can actually still get some chip damage here, which is kind of cool. And you can go ahead and go for... You can just let this move go through. Like, they don't have any coverage move on the Pidgeot. They're going to go for Feather Dance, which doesn't matter at all. And we see, oh, what is this coming in? You go for the charge move, even though, okay, it's going to be the Obstagoon. Even though, like, you are debuffed twice. Um, maybe not ideal there. Maybe keeping the energy would have been a little bit better. But you can go ahead and go for a Hurricane here. Maybe they're going to no shield. Sadly, they don't no shield here, as you have to let this move go through. Okay. Night Slash coming through here. Going to get no shield. You can go for one more weather ball. Do they shield this move up here as well? They do shield this move up. So they kind of value their obstacle like pretty highly there, I guess. And we're going to see the swap into the Pidgeot again. You're going to be forced to stay in here. And they're going to go for the Feather Dance, which now means you have to do at least two Rock Slides to knock them out. I think, like, yeah, it's going to be close. If they go for another debuff here, even two won't be enough. And they're going to go for another debuff. So they're going to be able to survive another rock set, I think, at this point of time. But what you're going to do here is very smart. Trying to store up some energy. Brave Bird coming through. Now they're going to get knocked out by this one. And you basically got a free rock side now as well. As you see the timer coming up there, the clock is ticking down. You can go for the one rock slide. And you're going to put them into range for one more weather ball. This should knock them out. And otherwise, the clock should also run out as well. And you're going to be able to win this one. Next opponent, we see a Steelix in the lead. This is very decent for you as we see a Crystalia coming in and you're going to stay in here this time around. Um, it's a pretty decent matchup for you. Depends if they have future side or not for the Venusaur. You want to swap into that later. But you're actually going to stay in here. Going to be the future side actually. So they run future side. Good for you that you didn't swap into your Venusaur there. It's always like a little bit risky to go into something like Venusaur to counter them. You, if you're lucky, you're right. Like, and you're going to be able to hardwall the charge with them. But if you're wrong, like, you're going to get hit by one feature side and you basically go down. So it's always like a 50 50. You will be able to at least have one shield advantage now. And you can actually, are you going to shield this move up? You would still survive it, right? You're going to keep this Pokemon around and go into your Pelipper to farm them all the way down. Interesting play. Um,. Very interesting play. You will get some energy here at least. And the Steelix is coming back in. I guess you're going to be able to get a ton of energy here. Which is good and go for a lot of um, Weather Balls. Which is very decent for you. You might even be able to reach another one. If they don't want to throw their next charge move. And you do. Which is amazing. This um, forces them to shield. And there's not a lot that they can do about that. You can go back into your... Oh, g -Fisk, and you gotta go for one rock side against this Trevenant coming in. This Trevenant is a little bit tricky to deal with. You're gonna go into your Venusaur. This should still be able to... Like, do you, you're going to let this move go through. It's going to be a Shadow Ball as well. You're going to survive this. You're going to over farm here. That's interesting. A Seed Bomb coming through. You can go ahead and go for one Sludge Bomb now. Sludge Bomb hopefully knocks out the opponent. I'm not sure about this. I have no idea. It does. And we will see the Frenzy Plan coming through, which definitely should, out the, should knock out the opponent's Steelix. And it's going to be a good game again. Very well played there. We see the final game here. We're going to see Stunfist against Galvantula. Very decent for you. You're going to see a Melmetal coming in. You don't really have the best answers for this in the back. So you're going to stay in and go for an Earthquake. Earthquake will get the shield from the opponent. And you kind of have to let this move go through. It's going to be a super power. So they're debuffed. 
he can shield this move. Yeah, you're going to shield this move up as well. It's going to be another super power, so they're double debuffed. And you will be able to either get the shield or switch advantage here, which is nice. And you're going to get switch advantage as you're going to swap out immediately into your Venusaur, which is smart at this point because if you went into your Pelipper, you would align the Pelipper against the Galvantula. Well, now you have the Pelipper for the Swampert in the back and the Galvantula has to face against this Venusaur. So I'm pretty sure this game is over at this point of time. You can knock out the Galvantula pretty easily with the Venusaur and you can also go still into your Stunfist to knock them out as well. So it's going to be a good game here. Honestly, I think Pelipper is very, very cool. I really like this Pokemon for Ultra League. Definitely a good one. I might build my 98% one as well then because it looks so, 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 so nice. Um, there are other Pokemon that got buffed that are not as good as this Pokemon here. So very cool to see that it has a lot of play in the open Ultra League. But yeah, that's going to be it for the video. If you enjoyed this video, please leave a like on it and subscribe if you haven't already. And otherwise, I'm going to see you in the next one. Bye.